in prayer, there you you get um, a number of the of debates and arguments and so on about, um, but the issues are often whether the the covering of the neck, the covering of the arm from the elbow to um, the um, the um, wrist, and uh, the covering of the feet, and. In my view, showing the neck in prayer doesn't abrogate the prayer. Uh, showing the feet doesn't abrogate the prayer. And in my view, it is better to cover the arm from the elbow to the wrist. Um, so I would not pray in a t-shirt if that t-shirt shows the arm. I mean, we, we could, and in a different situation and on an occasion, we could go into all the evidence and all the arguments and all of that, but um, that's, um, uh, does cover, if a little bit of the hair shows, that does, does this abrogate or void the prayer? No. So you'll find sometimes the hijab is wearing the hijab with a little bit of the hair showing at the beginning. There is a hadith that says, if three hairs show, your your prayer is invalid, which is a hadith that, the, the Wahhabis of old, because who knows what Wahhabis are today. Uh, after MBS, the Wahhabis have woken up and decided everything is different. But anyway, the Wahhabis of old used to used to swear by that hadith, if more than three hair, if three hairs or more show your prayer is null and void. That hadith is very problematic. It's It, it, it has not been authenticated by any of the scholars of hadith. It, it has many different problems. And I and there is no evidence that you know when you, when you see a little bit of the hair showing at the front that that voids the prayer. And Allahu Alam, and God knows best. No, male and female don't do not have uh, the same restrictions in prayer. Um, for, in the opinion of the majority of scholars, um, there is. A non-surviving school of thought, and I say non-surviving with the following proviso, is that I have met people in Moroccan and Algerian societies where men will not pray with their hair uncovered. And when I asked them why they will not pray with their hair uncovered, they said that it is haram. And uh, the way they were raised in their Maliki's school of thought, and in all the cases that I can think of, they were Maliki's, that's the way they were taught, is that both men and women have to cover their hair. Um, and these are rural areas that I, I have traveled in and so on. And when they said that, I remembered the opinion that did not survive in Islamic fiqh, that considered the, the hair in prayer for men to be aura, that men should cover their hair in prayer and considered that, but they also considered that you have to pray... Um, Anyway, they, they consider that if you if you prayed without a beard and you could grow a beard, that your prayer is invalid. But anyway, that's that's another point. Um, but that's that school of thought, as far as I know, didn't survive except in these areas that I, I've um, now having spent a lot of time in in um, uh, in Gulf countries. Um, you know, you're raised in societies where. Part of what the way a, a man dresses is to is to cover your hair with a aqal or a ghutra or whatnot. But why the awra and men and women are different in prayer, and whether that is whether that is the only possible position. I mean, I, I don't I don't want to open up issues that I cannot close in a reasonable amount of time. So I'll just tell you that the that the opinion that the prevailing opinion and the opinion of most jurists alive today and in the past is men and women have different auras that in prayer the aura of a woman is pretty much all her body except her wrist, her feet, her face and arguably her neck and that the aura of a man in prayer two schools of thought that in prayer it's only from the knee to the navel the other school of thought says it is from the knee to the the, the um, what do you call that part? Um, clavix? is that your clavic? clavicle to the clavicle, so it includes the chest. It doesn't include the arms. Um, I tend my my own I, view of the aura of men in prayer tends to be very conservative. I will not pray in anything that doesn't cover my entire body. 
why so I won't even preempt shorts um, not that I would wear shorts but even if I did wear shorts <laughs> I wouldn't pray in shorts uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't pray in a t-shirt I tend to when I really want to pray and reach a, a, a blessed prayer I cover my hair I, I, I will disclose that when I really want when I do my uh, my my qiyam and when I when I do do true ta'abud, I cover my hair. And some other time we can get into why and and how I came about that position. But I, I'm trying to remain, you know, not scandalize you too much and not scare you all away. Um, so that's prayer. 